Okay, this is the go through for checkpoint three on pendulums. If you've got any wrong, scroll through till you find the one you need. Um, what we've got in the first question is a bit of a tricky question, actually. What we've got is a, uh, a pendulum. We've decreased the length by 600 millimeters and the period of the oscillation has been halved. So the way to do this properly is to say, here's our original pendulum, t equals 2 pi root L over g. Here's our new pendulum, t dash, with period of t dash, and that's 2 pi root L dash over g. So our new pendulum's got a different period, t dash, because it's got a different length, L dash. But we also know that t dash is t over 2, because the period of the oscillation is halved. Okay, so if I go back to this one, what I can write now is t over 2 equals 2 pi root L dash over g. Take the 2 up the top, that becomes t equals 2 pi root L dash over g, but there's a 2 out of the front. Then I've got to take this 2 and put it inside the bracket. So that's the same thing as 2 pi root of 4 L dash over g. So if I now look at this expression and this expression, Okay, they're the same, they're both equal to t, so that what tells me that 4L dash must be equal to L. Okay, so the length must be a quarter of what it originally is, if you like, L dash equals L over 4. So I need the length to be reduced by 600 millimetres and to be a quarter of what it started at. Well, hopefully you can see from that that if it started at 800, it's gone from 800 to 200. That's a quarter as long, so my answer is A. Okay, quite a tricky one. You could do it by trial and error with these ones and just put it into the equation if you were a bit stuck, but that's the useful technique for how to answer those questions. Okay, our second one, a simple pendulum and a mass spring system, both have the same period t at the surface of the Earth, taken to another planet where the acceleration due to gravity is half of that of the Earth. Well, here's our two formulas for this. We've got for a pendulum t equals 2 pi root L over g, as we've just said, whoops, root L over g. We've got for a mass spring system, t equals 2 pi root m over k. So the first thing that might spot you, you might spot actually is to look at the mass spring system. It doesn't matter what gravity is, okay? That might seem a bit counterintuitive, okay? Because it does depend on the mass. Obviously, if you put the mass on and gravity is less, it will weigh less, so the spring will stretch less, but actually it works out that the period is the same, okay? So that narrows you down that one of those two might be right, and those two are definitely wrong. So then we need to look at this one. So we've got our new period, t dash equals 2 pi root L over a half g. Okay, we've got to get that half out of the bottom of there, which is a little bit tricky. So that's 2 pi root of 2 L over g. Take that 2 out of the front, we get root 2 times 2 pi root L over g. Okay, so we know that this is t from here, so that's root 2 t. So it turns out that this one's wrong as well, so that one's right. So the answer is A again. Okay, question 3. Still using the same formula, t equals 2 pi root L over g. Okay, but what we're doing this time is we're trying to find an answer for g. Okay, how do we do this from this experiment? Well, one way to do this is to square both sides. So I get t squared, because this is telling us that we're plotting t squared against L. So t squared equals 2 pi uh, L over g. Sorry, the 2 pi is all squared, so I've squared both sides. Um, if I just rearrange that slightly, I get t squared is 4 pi squared over g times L. Okay, there's the equation of a straight line. So I've plotted my graph of t squared against L. It's a proportional relationship, and the gradient of that line, which they're calling S, is 4 pi squared over g. So I've got s equals 4 pi squared over g, but what I want is a value for g, so a little bit of simple algebra gives you g equals, whoops, not that one, g equals 4 pi squared over s. Okay, a yet again. Okay, the last one again is a sort of ratios question, so we've got t equals 2 pi root l over g, should be used to that by now. We've got um, the period is doubled, when the length is increased by 3 metres. Well, what do we need to do to double the period? We need to go to 2t. Oops, 2t. Right, the way to do that is to make the length 4 times as long. Okay, so the length's got to go up to 4 times the length. 
Okay, so how do we, we've increased it by three but made it four times as long. Again, hopefully you can see that's from one meter, one plus three equals four, so it's four times as long. So once again, our answer is A. Okay, here's our longer answer question. So first question, give an equation for the frequency of the oscillation of a simple pendulum in terms of its length and acceleration due to gravity. Well, we should be pretty good with this equation now. T equals 2 pi root L over G. We also know that F equals 1 over T. Oops, 1 over T. So all we've got to do is 1 over that. So we get F equals 1 over 2 pi. Turn the root L over G up. It becomes root G over L. Conditions for this uh, to be true, small amplitude oscillations, okay, usually we say less than about 10 degrees, but it's um, it's an approximation for any amplitude, it's just that the smaller the amplitude is, the better the approximation. Okay, this question just requires you to try and get the right kind of bits of data out for the right bits, so we've got a simple pendulum, we've got a mass, which might surprise you because, of course, it, the period doesn't depend on the mass got an amplitude which might surprise you because the period doesn't depend on the amplitude either given this approximation we've already said and then it tells us it takes 46 and a half seconds to do 25 oscillations calculate the length of the pendulum much more information than we need for part one okay because what we're going to do is t equals 2 pi root l over g so we need to get l but notice the first thing is that we haven't got t so the first step is to do t again just be careful this is um, 46.5 seconds to do 25 oscillations. That gives us um, a period of 1.86 1.86 seconds, okay? Always do this check. 1.86 seconds, more than one second for each oscillation, yes, because it's taken 46 and a half seconds just to do 25 oscillations. Then we can go back to this formula. We want to get L out of this, so best step is to square both sides first, t squared equals 4 pi L over G, then just do t, uh, L therefore is t squared G over 4 pi squared. We've worked out our t up there, so this is 1.86 squared times 9.81 over 4 pi squared. This gives us a value for the length of 0 0.86 meters. Okay, calculate the magnitude of the restoring force when it's at its maximum displacement. Okay, now you start to see why the rest of that information is in there. So our first step is to work out the acceleration. So A equals minus 2 pi F all squared times X. Okay, so um, that's 2 pi. We need F here, but we've got a T, so let's just call that 1 over 2, put 1.86 down the bottom. We've got to square all that. And then we're looking for the maximum displacement. So this is when x is uh, maximum. That was 51 millimetres. So that's 51 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, stick that in your calculator and you work out the acceleration is 0 0.583 metres per second squared. Okay, this is only acceleration. So then we've got to do F equals MA. This is why this piece of information is here, the mass. So that's 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 times 0 0.583 gives us an answer of um, 7.0 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons. Okay, here's the last question then. We've got a 25 gram pendulum. It's got an 800 millimeter long string. It's drawn to one side and raised by 20 millimeters. So this is quite an unusual question, this one. Um, it does simple harmonic motion. Calculate the period. Well, this is fairly straightforward. This is just t equals 2 pi root L over g yet again. So all we've got to do is do 2 pi times, we can see the length of the string from this diagram is 0 0.8 meters divided by 9.81. Stick that in your calculator. You get a period of 1.79 seconds. So that's quite a nice easy two marks to get us started. Uh, however, this one is uh, much more difficult. So to work out, to show that the initial amplitude of the oscillation is 0.18 meters, what we're looking for is this distance here to be 0.18 meters. Now you can do that with a bit of Pythagoras, um, but that's not really how they're expecting to do it. Okay, what they're expecting to do is to say that this has got potential energy here. So we've got an energy conversion, MGH, 
turns into a half mv squared um, and that means that the m's cancel out and we end up with uh, v equals the square root of 2gh. Well that is the square root of 2 times 9.81 times the height it's gone up which is 20 millimeters so 20 times 10 to the minus 3 meters if you stick all that in your calculator then you find that the maximum velocity is 0 0.626 meters per second. Okay, so what we can do from that is we also know the SHM equation for the maximum velocity, which is as it goes through the middle, Vmax equals 2 pi fa. So what we can do is we can say that means that 0 0.626 must be equal to 2 pi times the frequency, which is 1 over 1 1.79 that we just worked out, times the amplitude. Rearrange that, you get the amplitude equals um, 1.79 times 0 0.626 divided by 2 pi that gives you an amplitude of 0 0.178 meters okay there's our check it said approximately 0 0.18 we got 0 0.178